You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, all right, folks. Uh, we've been talking about critical race theory. Actually, the Republicans have been doing, and mainstream media fell for the banana in the tailpipe. And the reality is this here. You have rich white conservative Republicans who are funding all of this. That's what they're doing. And then, of course, you had these idiots uh, running around, uh, all of a sudden showing up at school board meetings. And then you have Fox News say, oh, this is a major, major issue. No, it's a major issue that Fox News actually created. In fact, the folks at Media Matters have put out a new chart, okay, a new chart showing uh, how major this is, showing uh, how Fox News and the right, how they have blown this issue up to, to turn it. So this is what they do. This right here is the chart uh, that they put out, folks. OK, and it shows you there were three mentions, three mentions in June 2020 of critical race theory. And you see it went from three, six, three. All of a sudden, in September of 2020, it jumped to 69. Now, all of a sudden, election season, it fell back 6-4. All of a sudden, then it jumped. Then all of a sudden, 23, 21, 29, 107, 226, 537, 901. Hmm. Hmm. Do y'all see what's happening here? This is what happens when the right they begin to drive these messing, messaging. Well, uh, Judd Legum uh, has actually been doing a lot uh, of research, uh, and he's been uh, breaking down exactly, exactly where the funding is coming from, where it started. Now, before I go to Judd, he's, he, of course, he's with the Popular Information Newsletter. Uh, you had this idiotic brother, and he was one of the fools who were running his mouth out there, uh, critical race theory. And, you know, Fox, Fox News loves a black person who speaks against race. Listen to this dumbass on Fox News. Yeah, because they're, they're very invested in this whole idea that the nation was founded on the idea of systemic racism, that it's built into every single institution in America, even in the military. Um, folks are worried that this is something that they need to address within the military. And we just did a story about how the Navy is underprepared right now, but they're spending a heck of a lot of time on this. What do you think about that? It's absolutely absurd because nobody really wants to get the real history of it. America was not founded on racism. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah, there was slavery going on, but slavery itself was not initially a racist thing. It never was about race initially. So to sit there and take it like America was founded on racism, it's a complete lie. Yeah, there was slavery going on, but slavery was going on in all the world. It never was a race thing. So why are we making it a race thing now? Ty Smith, thank you for being here. Good to have you with us today. Thank you. Martha McCallum, are you that stupid? Are you that stupid where you could, that as a white woman, you couldn't even correct that brother who was that dumb? But again, y'all, understand the game, what they're doing. Joining us right now is Judge Legum. Uh, Judd, how you doing? Good, how are you, Roland? All right, so, so you've done a lot of research laying this thing out. You've had this fool, Christopher Rufo, with the Manhattan Institute. That's the same place where you had that other idiot, Heather McDonald. Uh, anytime Fox News needs someone uh, to say that white cops aren't killing black people in huge numbers, they run a Heather McDonald as she somehow is the so-called political, uh, the police expert. Uh, lay out what your research, research has discovered as to really who is funding all of this critical race theory drama. Yeah, so what I observed is just a whole host of different kinds of organizations, campus organizations, activist organizations, think tanks, and they all were pushing that mostly misinformation about critical race theory and injecting it, as that chart you showed before I came on, um, indicated just injecting it straight into the political conversation, making it virtually the number one topic that you hear about if you're watching Fox or um, many different news outlets. So 
looked at all of those organizations and then tried to find out everything I could about who was funding them. Now, some of their donors are secret, but if you get a donation from a private foundation, they have to file with the IRS and say who they're giving for. So I looked at all the private foundations that were funding these organizations, and one just kept coming up again and again and again, and also with large donations. And that was an organization called the Thomas W. Smith Foundation. Over $4 million from the Manhattan Institute that you talked about, but also all of these different organizations that are pushing critical race theory into the center of our discussion, from the Heritage Foundation to right-wing media outlets like the Federalist and the Daily Caller, uh, to some places that are less well-known but have played a big role in kind of pushing this, like the Claremont Institute, the Heterodox um, Organization, the PragerU, which is big on YouTube. So all of these have been getting funding from the same source, and they've all been saying virtually the same thing about critical race theory. And you mentioned PragerU. They were, uh, the New York Times, they did a big feature on them, I think it was a year ago, showed that it was, you know, they'd been funded by right-wing billionaires. They got the initial $7 million from two conservative billionaires out of Texas. That's the game that is played. That's how, how they do this, how these rich conservative, these white billionaires fund these uh, uh, conservative digital operations, fund these nonprofits, and then they get tax breaks. PragerU is a nonprofit. The Daily Caller, nonprofit. And so the Manhattan Institute, again, they create these fellows. So essentially uh, create these salary positions, and then that's how Fox News puts them on the air, OAN, Newsmax, all these entities. That's how they do this. Yeah. And Thomas W. Smith, who, who, who's a hedge fund guy from Florida, is on the board of the Manhattan Institute. And the person that he pays to distribute this money, a guy named James Pearsons, is also a fellow at the Manhattan Institute. And he's written a lot about race and his views of it. And really what it reveals is that what's coming up and, and the reason why they're pushing critical race theory it's not about what critical race theory is which is something that is taught mostly in law school about how systemic racism is embedded in the laws and in court decisions but it's a person who really opposes all efforts to uh, reduce racial or economic inequality even if it's done by a private foundation doesn't want um, black studies or women's studies to be taught uh, in school, uh, opposes all diversity efforts. So that's really the, the viewpoint of the people that are pushing this, and critical race theory is just a new vehicle for a lot of these old ideas. And that's, that's a lot, I think that's what my research um, helped show. And uh, uh, Eric Bowler uh, wrote a particular piece uh, about this where, where he talked about uh, how mainstream media uh, is failing at this. He is founder editor of Press Run Media, uh, and, and 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 he was clear in terms of and, and what happens. And, and I've walked our people through this, uh, Judd, so they can understand the game. They can understand how the game is played. Steve Bannon actually said it a couple of years, a few years ago. They conceive and they concoct these things in, this, in, in their conservative circles. They then say, they then weaponize it by saying, we need all conservative media pushing this thing out. Then they go, mainstream media, why aren't you covering this? This is a big issue. Then they flood the people uh, over to, uh, oh my goodness, look at these school boards. Look how many people are showing up. This is major news. And I talked about it yesterday, uh, how Joe Concha, who supposedly... Uh, a media uh, reporter who, who's now all of a sudden a political columnist with the Hill, who's also a Fox News contributor. He goes on with Harris Faulkner and goes, critical race theory is going to be a huge story and a huge issue in the 2022 and 2024 election and makes no mention that his employer is the reason why it's all of a sudden a, quote, huge story. Yeah, I think that's right. And Steve Bannon himself has talked about how, you know, he sees a lot of political benefit in talking about 
uh, critical race theory. And I think, you know, if you think back to that chart, I don't think it's a coincidence that this really started in the summer of 2020 when you saw more movement, more talk about racial equality, economic equality after the murder of George Floyd. And as that started to pick up steam, this is this is really the response to try to make this so toxic that people just if they're not talking about it, want to run away from it. And I think that's that's the issue about establishing critical race theory as a brand is sort of to take all efforts to talk about racial inequality and brand them as radical and subversive. And in fact, in this pretty stupid headline with The New York Times, and this is how dumb this is what Eric Bowler was talking about. This is this is opinion piece that dropped yesterday. The New York Times. Why is the country panicking about critical race theory? Jeff, the country is not panicking about critical race theory. They're not. You have a few of these conservative yahoos are. And in fact, Charlie Sykes, this is what he said in the piece here. He said, quote, people were looking around for some way to play this card of racial grievance. OK, this is what he told Sarah Jones at New York Magazine. They were looking for another cause in the cultural war. And this happened to be it. And he happened to be on it. And he's speaking about Christopher Rufo. Yeah. And I think one of the things is we're only really understanding the tip of the iceberg as far as what's behind this, because the nature of these financial disclosures, I'm able to look at the money that was donated between 2017 and 2019. Many of these groups, there's a bunch of new groups that were just formed this year. And those are the people who are contesting school boards, elections, rallying parents to show up and shout at school board meetings. They were created just this year, and we don't know who's behind them. My guess is it's probably a lot of the people that are behind the groups that we do know about and have some information about. But it's really been a huge effort, not only to inject it into the media, but also to turn out people and really terrorize a lot of these school boards to make this a salient political issue. And in fact, there have been superintendents and board members who've actually had to get security because of death threats. Judd Legum, great job with that research. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Robert, Scott, see, this is the thing that we have to learn to explain to others. And what happens is, Scott, you know, these mainstream networks be real quick. You know, they on stories like this, all of a sudden they can find all the black people to talk about it. And see, and see, we have to, we have to, again, game has to recognize game and be willing to go on and say, no, we're not going to talk about this because it's actually, it's dumb. We got to call it what it is. See, they want us trying to delve into it and break these things down because it feeds their purpose as opposed to calling it what it is. And what they want to do is they want to label anything dealing with race or diversity under critical under critical race theory and go, it's all bad, throw it all out. Well, it, it, it fits into their big lie narrative, too. I mean, you're denying the slavery occurred. You denying systemic racism. You're denying that the laws in the country's founding was based on a constitution that said slaves uh, were three fifths of a human being and had no rights. Are you kidding me? I'm a human being and my descendants uh, were slaves. The, the, the problem, the, the other challenge I thought you were going to raise is uh, do you ignore it or do you address it head on and oppose it? At every level. No, 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 no. Follow me here. Follow me. Here's what I say. No, no, I'm not saying ignore it. What I'm saying, call it out what it is. See, here's what they want. What they want is, and mainstream media is so dumb, they give it to them every single time. They actually want you to go book Kimberly Crenshaw to have a common sense discussion on exactly what critical race theory is. They see they because they win when you actually are taking their criticism seriously. What they hate is being dismissed. They hate it when you mock them. 
And I, that's what I would do. I mean, I would mock them. I would go, oh, really? I'm sorry. Oh, your feelings are hurt. Really? So this is a major. Oh, so this is a major deal. No, it's not. That's a lie. No, it's not. And that's why the New York Times headline is stupid. OK, yeah. the New York Times is feeding into the right wing narrative. They love seeing this headline. They are yeah. sitting here going, we won because this is the headline. Why is the country panicking about critical race theory? The country isn't. That's right. Well, we, hold, we, up, we, hold on, Robert. We hold on, Robert. Are. Scott, go ahead. I'm going to go back. Then I'm going to go right, Robert. Quick. We, 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 we certainly are because it's stupid to deny that slavery occurred or Jim Crow occurred, or that millions of black people were enslaved, or thousands, multiple thousands were, or that we were, we were abused and had less citizen rights and housing and voting rights and what have you. It's stupid to ignore the civil rights movement. But then why don't we, so why are we so afraid to teach that to our children in public schools and private schools? It's the truth, basically. So it's not a big deal. You're just fighting the truth or fighting windmills to have this social or cultural debate to offset Black Lives Matter. Ah, uh, but hold up. But see, police but, are killing us. But Scott, this is what yep. you just did. You mm -hmm. just walked into their trap. Well, saying that it was a lie? No. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on Robert. Hold on, Robert. Okay. You, no, right, you, yeah. you walked into their trap when you took the critical race theory and then talked about what we should be teaching our kids in school. Follow me here. Well, we certainly have to teach them the truth. No, 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 okay. no, no. But critical race theory is such, it's being taught, first of all, it ain't being taught everywhere. Right. It, in um, law it, it, right, 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 right. There you go. So right. not, not undergrad, not high right. school, not junior high. <laughs> so what happens is, the moment again, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just this is, this is how they think, no, fair and this enough, is, fair this enough. is why I'm know. saying when we debate, what we can't right. do is even bring up elementary school, middle school, and high school, Robert, because that's what yeah. they're waiting for. Because they, yeah. they're, they want to equate anything dealing with race as under critical race theory. Well, you know, you're absolutely right, Roland. I, I was on Fox a couple of weeks ago, and they we, we were debating this issue, and I said it's the weaponization of the Dunning-Kruger effect. And then I realized later on, ain't nobody watching what the hell that is. Uh, the Dunning-Kruger effect is this I idea in psychology that the less somebody knows about a topic, the more confident they are in their assertions about it. So these people aren't looking for truth. They aren't looking for fact. They aren't looking for reality. That if you start breaking down uh, race conflict theory from W.B. Du Bois and then transition into Derrick Bell, they don't care anything about that. These are the monster mm -hmm. truck uh, 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 rally going red hat wearing right. people and all they're looking to do is distract from the fact that they have not put forth an education policy in the last 20 years besides private schools and defund public education. That is what they don't want to talk about. Then, so any minute that we spend talking about their issues and addressing them as if they're serious, uh, uh, you're having a serious conversation is a complete waste of time. You just have to transition it into a conversation on what they aren't doing and why they're scared to have these conversations, and the fact that it hurts red state America, it hurts those same people in Appalachia just as much as it hurts black folk to not have a real conversation on public education, then all they're doing is try to distract away from coronavirus, distract away from impeachment, <laughs> distract away from January the 6th, and they uh, sorry, and they create a new boogeyman every couple months in order to do so. Yeah. Remember, before this, it was Common Core was going to destroy education. Then before that, it was Michelle Obama was going to put lettuce in your kid's lunchbox, so that was going to destroy education. Before that, it was prayer in school or corporal punishment, evolution versus creationism. It's always another conspiracy. If you try to logic your way out of it, you're going to lose every time. But why does America or conservatives and Republican, the voting public, why are they so gullible and so willing to believe that, though? Because they I understand dumb. the leadership share in there. But that's, they, that's just bullshit. No, no, Scott, Scott, because <laughs> and this is the thing that we have to understand. Democrats, just, just comparing the two, Democrats, more logical thinkers, hear it, let me check it out. Republicans, you tell me what? What, what Robert? <laughs> this, this is this, this is them. 
Well, Sean said it got to be true. They ain't checking nothing. They ain't listening to nothing. They ain't studying nothing. That's why more, you call it low information voters. Yeah. When they say yeah. low education voters, those are lo largely Republican voters. So, mm -hmm. and Republicans know it. Republican, when you had these broke ass people with no teeth in Kentucky, who in 2016 elected a Tea Party governor, voted for Donald Trump, and literally the week after the election were going, you know, I, I, I'm really concerned about us uh, and our losing our, losing our uh, health care. And they were like, you know, damn that Obamacare, but I don't want anything to happen to my Affordable Care Act. <laughs> Right there. That's the that is the core dumbass voter Duh. on the right. That's right there. Right there. Roland, on on that point, their their go to uh, you uh, I you know I, I debate a lot of people and uh, some very intelligent uh, conservatives, people like Bruce Lavelle is great to debate against, or some other people. But then there's some complete, I mean, let the uh, open the gates at the zoo idiots that you have to debate, and you and they go to the same talking points whenever they start talking about Marxism, socialism, communism. That means they don't know what the hell is going on. The rest of the conversation, and they're just <laughs> trying to filibuster to the commercial break. And that I, as soon as somebody starts saying, someone said cultural Marxism, and I asked them what was Marx's first name, and they got quiet. Because they hear little slogans here and there on the internet, or they'll hear it, see a headline, mm -hmm. and they'll put no more thought into it. And so when you're trying to have a logical argument with somebody who has put no thought into a subject, you might well be talking to a horse. There's absolutely no difference. You're going to make the exact same amount of leeway. And again, folks, that, that, that's exactly that's exactly what they do. This is the game. I just need people to understand the game. You got to understand the game. And so, yeah, and, 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 and yeah, Fox News, they'll call you, Robert. They ain't going to call me. Cause I'll they, be on the night at 1240. Because they know how that's going to go down. They ain't going to call me. They, they, they'll call you and Scott. But they you like. you going to be on at 1240 a.m.? Yeah, you know, uh, what's called Shannon shows late night now, so hop on. Hell, she ain't. She, <laughs> she, I'm not going to be up she, at 1240. I'll be up at 1240, but, but she ain't going to call me either. Because I'm telling you, like, I watched uh, the, the, the other day, Peter Hexeth, I saw it on Media I He was debating mm -hmm. this uh, uh, House Democrat, uh, and he was, he was being arrogant, condescending, and wrong. Then he had the nerve to call the House, the Texas Democrat, condescending. And then I'm like, no, a fool, that's you. But see, they love, and they, and they love to try to change the subject. But again, game recognized game. Y'all just got to realize what these fools are doing. And so that's what they're doing with critical race theory. Folks, back to that Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Racial injustice is a scourge on this nation. And the black community has felt it for generations. We have an obligation to do something about it. Whether it's canceling student debt, increasing the minimum wage, or investing in Black-owned businesses, the Black community deserves so much better. I'm Nina Turner, and I'm running for Congress to do something about it.